the higher self. The journey of exploration into our creativity, where we hold our creativity sacred in reviewing all the information that has come into my awareness from others, including my own experiences, has led me to the conclusion that who we really are is a projection of our higher self, which, in turn, is our individualized aspect of the awareness which resides in or behind creation. This discussion is focused on the concept of our higher self viewed from within the creativity perspective and provides some of the basis and reasoning for this conclusion. The creativity perspective is a perspective where we hold our creativity and those of others sacred. As such, this understanding about the higher self presented here is the most empowering paradigm found to date that holds our creativity sacred and allows for an understanding to access the depth and breadth of our creative power and creative ability. Now, this understanding about the higher self and its role as a creator does not necessarily correspond to the traditional understanding of God or the creator found in much of the literature and traditions about God and the creator. Here again, you're reminded of two things. One is this discussion of the creator arises from the creativity perspective where we hold our creativity sacred and which seeks to inspire individuals to embrace their own unique creativity as a creator. The second is the creator discussed here seems to answer all the questions encountered about the creator when looking into the depth and breadth of the creative power and creative ability available to us and the experiences individuals reported as having had. Before we proceed, here it is important to remember that the focus of this recording is directed at empowering our creativity and our creative imagination and uses the creativity perspective. Some of the concepts presented are analogies and serve a pedagogical purpose. One should not assume they are exactly the way creation works, but are effective for our creativity and the exploration of our creativity and that of creation. Although these concepts may be used literally in some situations, you're encouraged to see them symbolically. How this concept of the higher self integrates with other aspects of our being was expanded on in the discussion on creativity aspects and creative process of the human being as seen from the creativity perspective. In that discussion, it was stated there are five creative aspects of our being which gives rise to our creative power and creative ability. There is the human mind, which we experience as the conscious mind. There is our human body and an aspect which can be called our higher self. Then there is the aspect that, as a human being, appears to lie behind the mind and observes all that our mind and body experiences. Then there is our creative life energy, which sustains our body and energizes us to act. Here we talk about the higher self. The information review that gave rise to the understanding of the higher self presented here included the information available about the effects of the mind that people have come to call the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, the impacts of the mind-body connection, the diverse healing modalities that all seem to work in the right environment or situation, communications with extraterrestrials, near-death experiences, communication with entities from seemingly other realms, and the power of the human creative imagination. The question was, how did all this information and data fit together relative to our creative power and creative ability? In reviewing all the information that was coming to me in this journey of exploration into our creativity, it became very clear creation does not work the way the human mind thinks. What became clear is that the human mind is very limited, especially in understanding the true depth and breadth of creation and understanding how it works. The human mind can come up with some very effective explanations, analogies, or perceptions about how creation works in certain areas, but it'll always be incorrect in some way. Quite simply, the human mind's limited perception cannot fully grasp the infinity of creation and all its details. We are faced with needing to become aware of the limitations of the human mind relative to the unseen when dealing with the unknown, which includes our relationship with the Creator. Realizing that any paradigm at best would only provide a glimmer as to how creation really works, the question was, is there a way to view creation such that how all the types and kinds of experiences individuals have had 
could be supported as true and reproducible under the correct conditions. On the point of the limitations of the human mind, it is understood the concept of the higher self described here will be incorrect in some way, but it is very effective relative to exploring the depth and breadth of our creative ability and creative power and explaining the types of experiences individuals report. It is also found the answer to this question also needed to address an observation of a paradox encountered about the Creator or God, whichever you prefer. The experience most common about that which gave rise to creation that we call God, the Creator, the creative force, or whatever we want to call it, seems to be very, very impersonal. It was unreachable except maybe through elaborate rituals, prayers, ceremonies, and an intermediary and the like. Yet, in contrast, there was also the experiences that many have which makes them feel there is a God or creative force or whatever you wish to call it in the unseen realm of creation that takes a personal interest in our life. Also, a tremendous number of people report some type and kind of extremely personal experience that they know and have experienced God or the Creator loves them and cares about them as a unique individual that they are. Some report a communication with a higher being. Some describe angels. Some report spirit guides. It does not matter what one wishes to call it. There was the feeling something in the unseen was watching over and guiding the individual when necessary. Otherwise, the journey was improvisational except when specific guidance was received from the unseen realm. Many have also reported both aspects, very impersonal but yet very personal. The question was, can this paradox be explained? Additionally, the journey into the exploration of our creativity, including my personal experience around the concept of a life path, indicated the Creator was very interested in our life path, giving it a great love and attention and grooming us for the gifts we carried within. The answer to these questions relative to the Creator of our life path and the concepts of the higher self is consistent with empowering individuals to follow their own life path and if so led to explore the depth and breadth of their creativity is as follows. As such, it may not be the answer for everyone. Within this understanding, our awareness is seen as fundamental and underlying all of our experiences. Awareness is seen to move into consciousness when it's the awareness perceives itself to exist for it enters the realm of duality, existing versus not existing. This perception of duality then leads to the mind. The mind can be seen as a consciousness moving into the realm of thinking, reasoning, remembering, contemplation, attachment, judgments, desires, and the duality of this versus that. Our awareness is seen as a unique, individualized aspect of the larger awareness encompassing all of creation with a wave-like nature that can span all of creation. As such, all of creation is available and accessible to us, but as in a hologram, a part contains the whole, but being a part, it is not quite as clear since it is only a part. We are a unique individualized aspect of the creative essence of creation with a unique and subjective perception of creation. We each have a unique offering to give or bring into creation. We each are on a solo journey of discovery and exploration of ourselves to experience the depth and breadth of who and what we really are. We each take this journey of discovery and exploration in our unique way, and any other who enters our life is only there to give us the ex an experience to discover what lies within our own being. Paradoxically, one can experience themselves as a part of the whole, infinite consciousness within creation, yet it is still an independent awareness which has the option and free will to explore the true depth and breadth of its uniqueness. Whatever perspective one takes, there is an interdependence between the individualized aspects of the creative essence in that it is through the interaction with each other that opens one to exploring the depth and breadth of one's being. We cannot explore the depth and breadth of who we are unless we have something or someone causing a response to arise within our being. Now the journey did reveal the existence of a creative spirit. This creative spirit is the fuel, the energy, the passion of our higher self uses to guide our life. This creative spirit is different than the concept of a soul and is more than just a spirit animating our body. Rather, it is creative, and if it is unable to create what it desires to create to a significant degree, the individual would be dissatisfied with life in some way and feel something was missing. That is, 
It has a reason for incarnating and often has little to do with the society and culture in which we inhabit. The culture and society are just the stage, so to speak, for what it wants to experience. In regards to what the creative spirit wants to experience, it became clear there is a life path. This life path can be seen as an itinerary for our life in that there are key events or experiences that are prearranged for us to encounter and our response will be totally improvisational based on what we have come to think and believe about ourselves, our life, and the world we inhabit. It sounds like we are predestined for certain things, but that's not quite true. There is a variability determined by our free will and the choices we make in our life. But quite common is the feeling we are being guided to go in a certain direction and to be brought back to a particular path if we seem to be straying too far off. The issue of mind. Where the body is a vehicle we use to experience physical creation, the mind is the vehicle our individuated consciousness uses to experience creation in any aspects of creation, physical or otherwise. In this regard, the awareness of mind is ultimately what created our body as a vehicle for the physical experience. Mind can be seen as a property, attribute, or aspect of awareness or consciousness, and the ego, or maybe better said, ego identity, is how the mind defines itself or sees itself within the creation it is experiencing. The challenge is to create an ego which serves us in what we incarnated to do. There are two parts to our mind. There is our human mind that arises from our current experience as a human being and can be described as our conscious mind and aspects of our subconscious and unconscious mind. Creatively, you can look at the subconscious mind as being a shallow portion of the unconscious mind. Both are accessible but accessed in slightly different ways. The second part of our mind can best be described as the transcendental mind, which is everything that lies outside the human mind and the experiences mind has as a human being. The transcendental mind is, in essence, the unconscious mind and is also reflective of the holographic aspects of our consciousness as a result of the wave-like nature of our awareness spanning all of creation. Simply said, the conscious mind is the mind we experience from within the perspective of the body we inhabit. The unconscious mind is a much deeper and broader aspects of mind and involves aspects of the body, the mind within the body, and the mind within our higher self. Our higher self is the aspect of our being that remains outside physical creation and it is in contact with our human mind and body and with all aspects of creation. A way to look at the higher self is to think of a wave on the ocean and its many crests and troughs between the crests. Think of the crest from the top of the crest to the bottom of the trough as an individualized consciousness. But any one crest is connected to the whole ocean below the trough and it is in communication with the whole ocean. Analogously, our higher self is connected and in contact with the consciousness which lies behind creation. It is this connection with all aspects of creation that allows it to coordinate the experience it desires to have with any realm in which an aspect of it incarnates. It is the connection of our higher self with the consciousness within and behind creation that allows for the magic, mystical, and synchronicity to appear in our life. It is this connection that allows for the creation to give us an experience of what we think and believe, unique as that experience may be. As said, the information from the journey of exploration of our creativity led me to understand who we really are is a projection of our higher self. This higher self is a creator creating in the image of the creative essence that has given rise to creation, both creative essence and creation with a capital C. In essence, you could say this higher self is the child of the Creator, created in the image of the Creator. Being created in the image of the Creator, our higher self is multidimensional and spans all of creation. As a human being, our higher self can be viewed as a bridge between two worlds. It bridges the physical world we inhabit and the unseen realm of creation. In the, quote, magic of creation, our higher self simultaneously exists in the unseen realm of creation and has incarnated into physical creation. It has taken form as a human being to have a set of improvisational experiences it wrote, directs, and is the lead actor to play with and in the manipulation of the energy of creation. Difficult for the human mind to understand, we are both here playing in an orchestrated improvisational role within physical creation 
and simultaneously a significant portion of who we are remains in the unseen realms. The portion of our being that remains in the unseen realms is in full communication with the oneness and interconnectedness of creation to orchestrate the life that we are living. We only forgot who we really are to play the role we created for ourselves and to have the experience of our higher self for whatever reason it has. As a human being, we are an extremely talented actor who has agreed to play a role in a play where we forget every role we ever played in the past, yet retain all the abilities and expertise from the past that we need for our current role. As said above, the conclusion about our higher self as to who we really are was based upon reviewing all of the information obtained in exploring the answer to several questions. One of the questions of the journey of exploration into our creativity was to look to find an answer to the question, is there a way to view creation that no matter what a person believes, they will have some type of experience of that belief such that they can point to that experience as the proof of what they believe is true. A second objective was answering the corollary question which asked, was there a way to view creation that would support such personal and subjective experiences as true? In addition to looking for a way to view creation to answer the two questions for an individual's personal experiences, the journey pushed the exploration into topics related to before, during, and after our incarnation in regards to how they did or did not impact our creative power and creative ability while in our human body. There's a caveat about this model for our higher self that's reflected in the origin of the word caveat from the original Latin which says, let the person beware. That which we need to be aware is that our higher self transcends all of creation. We, as humans, are a projection of our higher self can get a glimmer in our human mind of some of these other aspects of creation. As such, our human mind can get distracted if not lost in these other aspects and diverted from what we are here to do. It needs to be clearly understood in the analogy of both the ocean wave and this individualized crest on the ocean both simultaneously retains its individualized aspect within the whole ocean but it also becomes the whole ocean in what it knows and perceives. Hence, we as an individualized awareness becomes holographic. As in any hologram, we have the whole within us. As with any hologram, a piece retains the whole image, but some clarity is lost because it is only a piece of the whole. Because our higher self is in contact with the whole, it sees the bigger picture for our life. Our higher self looks to our overall unfoldment in the bigger scheme of creation. As such, it usually will direct us towards the reason why we incarnated. We need to remember nothing is ever wasted and there is no schedule to keep. We can divert ourselves if we so choose, but we do need to get our higher self on board for any significant changes. Besides, it will have to orchestrate the changes with all the other players that agreed to give us the experiences we said we wanted. However, our higher self is much wiser than our human mind as to what we are here to do and as such does not readily allow our human mind to get what it wants. The question then becomes how do we focus our attention and awareness to access what information we desire and to, or create from within the realm of the infinite possibilities. The only issue is what does our life path and current incarnation ask of us in this and any other moment in our physical life? Does what our human mind want in some way conflict or interfere with our life path? The question is what aspects of our creative power and creative ability have we blocked so as to not interfere with the experiences we desire to have in this incarnation and provide us with all the health we need for those experiences. So to answer one of the original questions stated above, who and what is this creator of our life path and why should this creator be so interested in our life path giving it the love and attention? It does. It is our higher self is the creator of our life, which is just an aspect of ourselves and an individualized aspect of the consciousness within and behind creation. As such, it has an invested interest in our life and its unfoldment. To deny the body and the life we experience to which we are led, we are denying our own creation and in essence fighting ourselves. More importantly, we are denying ourselves and the creative power and ability we possess. This denial, in turn, robs us of our creative power and creative ability. It is important for us to take responsibility for the experience we are having and look to see what the experience we are having is asking us to experience. We can always ask for clarification and understanding. We will get an answer in some way if we are open to the answer. 
Within this understanding, we can see how we each can have a very personal, direct experience with the Creator, including the magic, mystical, and synchronicity it can provide to us. Yet, because we are connecting to the unfolding creation at this particular time and place, we can see how impersonal creation and the Creator can be. Yet, we have a role in this unfolding larger creation and our role is orchestrated within the whole. Our particular role is encoded within the flow of creative life energy that brought us into this life and sustains our life. When we align with our own internal guidance, we are playing our unique part in this larger orchestration. I personally found the way to deal with living in this paradox is to listen to my internal guidance and follow it and align with my life path. In doing so, I know I am being guided and fully integrated with the role I am asked to play in this seemingly impersonal physical creation. In doing so, even when there are difficulties, there is an inner satisfaction with life regardless of what is happening in the external world and the challenges being offered. The recommendation here is to know you are being guided within an improvisational play. You can know your part by your heartfelt passion and feel of the inner satisfaction you get when you are free to express it. If you have any questions or concerns about your journey, Establish a relationship with your higher self in a way that serves you and serves your uniqueness. Do your own experiments and see what works for you and then listen to the guidance you get.